I want to get your thoughts uh, on your initial reaction to the George Floyd story. When you first heard about it, what was your reaction? Um, my first reaction was just like we just, you know, black people just came to get a break, even in the global pandemic. Um, we're trying to survive this pandemic. A lot of people are struggling right now, and and we still have to witness and fight against police brutality. It is is just unbelievable right now. Just uh. I guess some of the things I've been talking about, CC, is that, you know, this is not just some one-off or just some isolated story. This has been going on mm-hmm. for generations and generations. And with George Floyd, this story happened in Minneapolis. It just, you know, once again, the issue and the big thing that has to be brought up is if there's no video, we're not doing all this, you know, and I think the video mm-hmm. speaks for itself. The video speaks for itself and the video should be enough evidence for not just Minneapolis, but for all the states and federal to see that this is a real thing. This is not a made up thing. This is not an isolated thing. This is happening over and over and over again. And this is not the first time like with George Floyd, we have seen a black man or a black woman taken down and murdered in broad daylight by the police. You know what I'm saying? So this is why it's getting aggravating is because just like Eric Garner, just like with Lindo and with countless and countless of other people, you have it recorded. It's on tape. And still people want to argue it. People want to fight against justice. And people are refusing to reform the police system because that's what has to happen. The police system has to get reformed. CC with us here from Power 107.5-1063 in Columbus, Ohio, with Jonathan Hood on ESPN 1000 and the ESPN Chicago app. CC, um, this weekend in Columbus, could you paint a picture for us on what you saw, the coverage, and what it was like in Columbus uh, as far as protesters? Well, at first it seemed like it was very one-sided as protesters were being very aggressive, which in certain isolated situations, They were being aggressive. Um, Usually that would happen at night here in Columbus. Um, But I went to a protest Saturday afternoon. It was broad in Front Street. And I would have to say that protest is very peaceful. Um, There is definitely a difference between the police that, you know, are wearing the regular uniforms. They're letting people talk, protest say what they have to say and are not, you know, antagonizing them, not invading their space. They're not talking back. They're allowing people to exercise their right to protest, which is, again, a right that the people of this country have. However, it seems like every time the right gear (laughs) police come down, it's antagonizing. They want to start shooting off weapons. They want to start shooting off rubber bullets. I mean, one of my roommates that I lived with got hit. It wasn't even a rubber, something made out of wood, it, like a pellet. So it's like, you know, people want to be peaceful, but sometimes the police are antagonizing the crowd to get, have the crowd give them, their, in their minds, a reason to become more aggressive. And it is unfortunate, like we see in a lot of cities, that some people are taking what's going on in Minneapolis as an excuse to also go down and loot businesses. And it's definitely sad to see a happening to black owned businesses, which has also happened here in Columbus, which is also creating some mixed emotions with people. A lot of people don't agree with that. So, but overall I would say we do have the national guard now, in Columbus, it's been mm-hmm. they've been here since Sunday, and things overall have become more and more peaceful. CC, you mentioned you broke up a little bit, but I, I want to make sure it's clear that you said that you're at a protest and you said that you, your roommate was was shot by. It was not a rubber pellet, but it felt like some. It felt like something different out of the gun, right? It, it looks like it looks like a wooden pellet. It's like if you take like a wine cork and just blow it up like 10 times the size of that. 
and it's hard. Like you can't, it's, it's just like a big wooden pellet. And that's what they're calling it out here. I don't know what the term for it would be, but it's not a rubber bullet. It's like a wooden pellet and it actually hit her. Mm. And she, and she's still sore to this day from it. it. It really hurts. And it's just like, you know, tear gas and everything. It's like if people are not invading your space, if people are not trying, are not threatening you verbally or physically, there's no reason why the police should be taking matters like that in their hands. Like you got, like, especially with the police, they get up early in the morning, they know what streets to block off to give protesters those areas to protest. If they're coming and they're practicing their right to protest without violating any laws, there's no reason for y'all to antagonize it and turn up the volume on them to get aggressive. CC from Power 107.5 and 106.3 in Columbus, Ohio, with Jonathan Hood on ESPN 1000 and the ESPN Chicago app. Um, CC, you've been in, in Columbus for a few years now, so you've got a, a, a kind of a lay of the land uh, in Columbus. What, how would you characterize the relationship between black people and the police overall in that city? Well, I would have to say I'm, I'm definitely, uh, I didn't know much about Columbus, Ohio before moving here. And I didn't think Columbus, Ohio had issues when it came to police brutality. But unfortunately, I I am very wrong. There has been incidences with the police when it comes to police brutality. And overall, according to some studies and some reports that are out there, Columbus police are ranked in the top five or in the top ten when it comes to, you know, unlawful activities within the black community. But I know that for the radio station I work at, Power 107, 106, we do have, you know, examples of good cops and good police men and women who want to help us when it comes to community events, you know, trying to bridge the gap between the police force and the community. So, yes, pe- people are not scared of the police. People are not scared to call 911 because they're afraid that instead of them coming to protect and to serve, they're coming down to hunt them down, as a lot of people say. And, you know, they're like I feel like it's like this in a lot of cities. There's good cops, there's bad cops. Mm-hmm. However, when are the good cops going to finally kick the bad cops out or make people accountable for the bad decisions and the bad actions that they make while wearing the shield? So I feel like Columbus is no exception to a lot of other cities when it comes to police brutality. Um, Is it as bad as other cities? I can't really say. But I know that we do have a lot of work to do in Columbus, Ohio. Cece, what have you heard about uh, home? Because you are from uh, Detroit, uh, Detroit area. So what have you heard about um, Detroit uh, during this weekend? Uh, I know Detroit had some protests downtown. Unfortunately, I did hear on the news that a 19-year-old boy was shot and killed. They're saying it was not by the police. It, 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 they're trying. They're still investigating it. Mm-hmm. They're not sure who um, opened fire on a crowd of people and ended up killing the 19-year-old. But there has been, of course, some looting people protesting and you know of course Detroit they also have their own issues and problems with the police as well yeah so I feel like it's a nationwide thing at this point I mean you're seeing Salt Lake City (laughs) Utah Mm -hmm. of all places protesting police brutality so well I'll I'll, I'll, just to piggyback on that though CC so to me This particular death has hit home and and hits differently this time than ones in the past. Because there's so many stories, even from this year, of those that were that was died at the hands of police by for no reason, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Of the African American, either women or men, that have died Mm -hmm. for no reason. So this hits differently because I saw those videos from Salt Lake. I know that every state in the union had some kind of protest, and that, to me, right. that, that that tells you a lot, does it not? 
it definitely tells me a lot. It tells me a lot that a lot of people, not just the black community, but white people, Hispanic people, people of all walks of life are witnessing and waking up to the fact that, okay, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely, there's no way. Like, even if George Floyd did something wrong, you had him handcuffed, you put him in the car, and you take him to jail. There was no need for that officer to use that force and to go out of his way and put his knee on his on the back of his neck and kill him. There was no reason for that. No matter what George did, he did not deserve to die. And to see people across the country trying to protest and do their part to force not just Minneapolis, but the country to realize that this is a problem. And until this is not a problem for the black community, it's all of our problems. We all have a part to play in this. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going, it touches everybody. It touches See, everybody regardless if you believe that or not. Yeah. CC, so what are you going to do on your show? Usually you've got, uh, you're spilling the tea on everybody on your show, telling all, <laughs> all the stuff that's going on, all the rumor and innuendo about Hollywood and black Hollywood. So what do you do on your show? What do you do on power now to be able to talk to the people in Columbus? You know, we've been really having open dialogue with the community. We are doing our best to be that platform for people to engage and get things off their chest. You know, I always open the phone lines for my listeners to say, hey, look, even if you don't want this on air, if you just need somebody to talk to because you're watching the news and you're just frustrated, talk to me. Like, I feel media, like, it's cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're doing sports. That's cool. But sometimes we have, um, we have a platform that we also have to use for good because sometimes life is bigger than sports. Is bigger than entertainment. Is what's going on right now is not more important than what celebrity couple broke up today and is having a messy breakup on IG and slandering each other today on IG. Mm-hmm. Sometimes life is more important than what team beat what team in this sport. Well, you're certainly right about that. There's no question. I'm glad that I was able to connect with you, CC, because I just wanted to find out why, after watching the coverage in Columbus what was going on, and you really gave us um, an insight of what's going on. So uh, I'm prayerful that all is well uh, with you, especially in that city, and uh, hope I get a chance to talk to you on, on better circumstances, that's for sure. Right. And, you know, Chicago's my second home, so I just want everybody to be safe, and I hope everybody is being safe, and hope things in Chicago get better, because I know the – there's issues with the Chicago PD. Mm-hmm. I understand that. But also, if you do live in Columbus, Ohio, we do have resources. And if you go to mycolumbuspower.com, we've been having a lot of resources on the website for protesters and just for people to be more engaged with the things that are going on in Columbus in particular. Cece, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's uh, CC from uh, Power 1075 1063 in Columbus with us here as you're listening to Under the Hood with Jonathan Hood. This is Under the Hood.